Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who discovered the Americas? If you said Christopher Columbus, you're half a millennium too late. And if you said Leif Erikson, well, that's half a point. Because if we believe the sagas which describe Erikson's voyage to the Americas, we also must accept that in those sagas it states, Erikson rescued two shipwrecked sailors who drifted from the Greenland coast and ended up on the newfound continent. So quite possibly some unnamed sailor who will never probably know the identity of discovered the Americas. Not that I'm saying any of this as a matter of fact, as sources are extremely limited. So as always, this is liable to change with the more stuff we dig out the ground. But how exactly does this lead to Scotland found in Canada? Well, it's another one of those technically videos where it all comes down to the definition used to describe an event. By Canada, I don't mean the current nation-state of Canada, but more vaguely, the first attempt at genuine colonization in Canada by Europeans. Leif Erikson may have all the fame for first setting foot on Canada, and that might or might not, as previously noted, be true, but today I don't want to talk about Leif Erikson as that story has been told plenty of times before. But what I do want to talk about is the first attempted at permanent settlement in Canada. This leads us to Torfinn Karlsefni, who was an Icelandic explorer around the turn of the first millennium. So the year is probably around 1010 and Karlsefni has embarked for Canada. Sources differ, though he probably left Europe with no more than 140 men and no more than three ships. Unlike Leif Erikson's voyage a decade prior, Karlsefni's ships brought women and cattle, a strong signifier of their intent to remain. Whereas Erikson's expedition was 35 men sound discovery, Karlsefni's expedition was very much set on settlement. The route from Greenland to Canada wasn't too unknown by this point, but the first sighting being made by Jarni Herjolfsson around 25 years earlier. But to really understand the events of what might have happened next, given the contradictory nature of the only two primary sources, I feel it would be more accurate to just list the main characters of the sagas and a little bit about how their stories differ. So first up we have Carl Sefni's wife, Gudrid Torjarnardottir. Gudrid was previously married to Leif Erikson's brother, Torstein. Leif and Torstein also had another brother, Torvald, and it's Torvald's story which can be considered the biggest difference between the sources. What we do know is at some point Leif Erikson went out and discovered Canada. We also know at some point his brother Torvald would follow in his footsteps, and he would become the first European to die and buried in Canada. However, whether he went on the voyage before Karlsefni or on his own is not known. The Greenlander saga states Torvald had his own voyage, and he would die during a fight with the Native Americans, which they called Skrallings. The saga then states Torstein made his own voyage, taking his wife Gudrid with him to recover Torvald's body and return it to Greenland. Torstein and Gudrid would inevitably fail to find Canada and would end up returning to Greenland, where Torstein would die during the winter epidemic of 1003. Gudrid would then marry Torsvin Karlsefni and suggest the idea of travelling to Vinland. It is worth noting the saga of Eric the Red states Torvald joins Karlsefni on his voyage to Vinland where he still dies during a conflict with the natives, so that's at least something the sources agree on. While she wouldn't be wrong for giving either answer, it is worth remembering that it seems likely the saga of Eric the Red is merely adding these events together to make a more overall grandiose affair, or at least that is my interpretation. So now that we've got through Eric the Red's male children, we might as well get his daughter Freydis out of the way too. Freydis' story as with Torvald's is up for debate as the stories in the sources differ drastically. Freydis, like Torvald, may or may not have joined Karlsefni on his expedition, but one thing both sources agree on is that Freydis was a strong-willed woman who defied the expectations of the society around her. Another thing that is agreed on is that she went to Vinland, and that she was a bit of a lunatic. What we don't know is when she went. If we believe the Greenlander sagas that we have done for Torvald, then Freydis makes her own voyage to Vinland with two Icelandic merchants she negotiated with, named Helgi and Finnbogi. Once there, to say the groups didn't get on would be an understatement. They even went as far as to create separate camps. Apparently, after Freydis had agreed to make peace with Helgi and Finnbogi, Freydis returned to her camp where she beat herself up and claimed that she had been ill-treated to her husband. She demanded revenge under the threat of divorce, so her husband with his men snuck into Helgi and Finnbogi's camp and killed all the men. Freydis ordered the woman to be killed, but her husband declined, so enraged by his disobedience picked up an axe and slaughtered all five women herself. Freydis then threatened to kill anyone who mentioned of the murders. This story concludes a year after returning to Greenland where Leif would learn of the murder through a good old bit of torture of Freydis' men. Apparently though, Leif wasn't big on Sibla's side and her only punishment would be her fellow Icelanders looking down upon her and her descendants, which is pretty Disney for history. Unfortunately for Freydis, the saga of Eric the Red doesn't make her look any less psychotic. It is in this recounting of events she joined Karlsefni on his expedition, but is only mentioned during an assault by the natives on the Viking camp. The natives snuck up and fired what might have been a catapult-like weapon at the warriors. Most of the men, having seen no such weaponry before, begin to flee. Freydis, eight months pregnant, hears the commotion and comes out to see the men retreating. Unimpressed, she essentially stands there calling them all pussies from the sidelines. Yet the men ignored Freydis, presumably too busy being preoccupied by whatever terrifying invention the natives had created. Enraged by their cowardice, she grabs a sword from a fallen viking and starts pounding the flat side of the blade against her breast, and unleashes a furious war cry. 
The natives, seeing the screaming pregnant white woman brandishing a sword, decided the fun was over and got back into their ships and left. And this leaves us with one person left to discuss, who might not seem as important, but I assure you in the grand scheme of things, definitely was. The first European to be born in the Americas. Now, you might be thinking it's Freitas' child, as I just mentioned she was pregnant, but alas, her child was not the first, as about three years earlier, Gudrid gave birth to Torfinn's son, Snorri Torfinson. Snorri Torfinson not just being the first European born in the Americas, but he's probably also the reason why we still remember this story today. In the years after the events of Vinland, Snorri would go on to be a fundamental figure in the Christianization of Iceland, and if it wasn't for this Christianization during the 11th century, there's a strong chance the Christian monks who wrote down the Vinland sagas a century plus later might not have wrote down these sagas at all. But okay, okay, what about Karlsefni's journey? What does this all have to do with Scotland? So finally we've got to the point where I allude to how exactly I get away with claiming the Scotland founded Canada. Well, it's sort of hyperbole if you're feeling polite, it's bollocks if you're not, but I will explain what I mean. As Torfin Karlsefni arrived in Vinland, he didn't want to risk his colonists or soldiers to whatever predators could be out there, so he insisted on sending two of his Scottish slaves to spend a night on the new land, and if nothing attacks them, only then would the Vikings come ashore. After a day or two, seeing the slaves were still alive, the Vikings began to settle. So there, technically, if you're feeling generous, you could say Scottish people were the first Europeans to find a settlement in Canada, although that does admit the fact that doesn't really have much choice about it, probably didn't really want to do it, and probably didn't have particularly happy existence after that discovery. But I mean, yeah, technically. But anyway, to wrap up Torfin Karlsefni's story, Karlsefni's expedition would last a little over three years, with Snorri being born somewhere near the beginning. The colonists would arrive at Leif Erikson's cabins on the northeast coast of Canada and settle there for the winter. After that, they would continue down the northeast coast. From their camps, they would trade with the natives, but were ordered not to trade their swords or spears, which was lucky as one day a bull the Vikings had brought with them freaked out the natives, and well, conflict ensued. The story about the bull might be the only cause of the initial conflict, but it is worth noting that during Torvald's expedition, at least eight natives were killed, and this was quite literally have been their only experience with Europeans. There were various tribes in the area, and if you run into one tribe who remembers the last Europeans to arrive, then conflict is also really inevitable. But it was after this battle involving Freydis, her breast, and the sword that they decided it was probably time to leave home for Greenland. And that's kind of it, really. As you can see, we don't really know what happened as from the two primary sources. It's nothing but a scattering of misinformation. It's one of those events in history that only, ironically, time can't answer. Until we dig up more stuff out the ground, and until we get archaeologists into those new excavations, the true mystery of who might have actually been first will probably be unsolved. Until then, we have the tales, the myths, and the legends. Yeah.